and I hope you have a great class. Over to you, ladies. Okay, thank you, Felicia. Hi, everybody, and welcome to today's Jelly Arts class. My name is Birgit Koopsen, and I'm a brand ambassador for Jelly Arts. And uh, today we're going to print with leaves, uh, which is, I think, very suitable um, because fall is really here, at least here in the Netherlands where I am. It's been really rainy and cold. And um, yeah, so I think it's really suitable. Um, thank you, Michaels, for having us. And um, Luanne is here also uh, from Jelly Arts to answer your questions in the chat. And today we will be printing with archival um, stamping inks instead of acrylic paint. And um, you can get some really fun uh, results. And the effect of printing with ink is totally different than printing with acrylic paint. So um, let's focus on my workspace and my hands and I will show you how to do this. So um, first of all, I'm printing today on my Jelly Arts 5x7 plate. And I have it here on my table on a sheet of paper. And as you can see, my, um, my gel plate is a little bit yellowish. It is, um, it is colored, it has been stained by using inks. And so that's the downside of using inks on the gel plate that the pigments in inks uh, will stain the plate. That will happen with, for instance, the archival inks, but also uh, when you use alcohol inks on the plate. This does not affect any prints and it is also not showing up in any future prints. So you really don't have to worry about it. Um, we're going to make prints with leaves today and I have a couple of them here. Um, so this is the kind of prints we're going to make. I'm going to show you different techniques for uh, different results and also on a variety of, uh, of papers. So let's start by showing you the ink. So here I have a little tin with the, the mini um, archival inks in there. And here I have a combination of the Tim Holtz Distress uh, archival inks. And I also have some of the regular archival, Ranger archival inks, and they can just be um, used together. So it's the same type of ink. The only difference is that the Distress archival inks have um, matched the colors of the um, Tim Holtz Distress inks. So, um, but they are, these are also permanent inks. So inks are really uh, easy to use on the plate because they take a long time uh, to dry. So you have quite a lot of time to work. And because they stay wet for a little while, you don't need any um, paint to pull the print. So in general, every print that you pull uh, will work out. You will pull up all the ink from the plate because it is still wet. And I'm using today my uh, speedball brayer, my soft rubber brayer. And I'm going to uh, roll off my brayer on a paper towel instead of copier paper, uh, which I normally do because this just um, soaks up the ink a little bit better and, um, and cleans the, the brayer a little bit better because I'm working with the ink. So um, let me see, I'm going to start with printing on um, white cardstock paper available from Michaels. It's the, from the recollection, um, collection and um, I have one sheet of this paper underneath my uh, gel plate and it's the same size as that I'm going to um, print on so I can uh, easily line up the paper if I want to do several prints on one um, on one sheet of paper I can line it up here and here 
so I'm sure that I always have my paper in the right decision, uh, position. So let's do this paper first. I'm going to take a couple of colors and just randomly apply them to my plate. Um, and you have to be careful that you don't overlap the ink on your plate because that will um, uh, contaminate your ink pad. So if I would use this lighter green and go over the blue, darker blue and the darker green here, I would contaminate my uh, lighter green um, ink pad with the darker color. And I don't want that. So I go very close to the previous color, but I make sure that I don't overlap. Um, let me see. I'm just going to start with a variety of blues and greens. And this one, it's very similar to that one, but it is a little bit different. So, and now I'm going to use my brayer to, um, to blend the colors. And I'm not going to push really hard. I don't really want to remove the ink from the place, but I just want to, to blend it a little bit. So I'm going over there very lightly, just so the colors blend. I get a nice even layer of ink. Now I'm going to place leaves on top. And I just um, went outside about an hour before and the class started and collected a whole bunch of leaves. And um, you can basically use any leaves, but um, leaves that have a very uh, outspoken, I don't know if that's the right word, but veins that you can like really feel them. I think the word is veins, right? If you can really feel them, then they will probably also really show up in the uh, in the print. And if they have less, then you will more get like the um, um, the silhouette or the outline of the leaf, but not so many details. Um, the gel plate is very sensible, so um, it will pick up. Um, a lot of details. So the more details you actually have in your leaves, the more you actually also will see in your prints. So I'm just, and as you can see, I have my ink already rolled out here and I'm still talking and not doing anything. And that's fine because the inks take a while to dry. Eventually, eventually they would dry. So you can also do techniques um, where you want your first layer to dry. But for this technique, it stays wet long enough um, to create a nice print, even if you take your time um, placing the leaves where you want them to be. And I'm just going to do a whole bunch of different, of different leaves. And a small one here. Now there are, um, several techniques that you can uh, do with the combination of leaves and inks. The first one is that you use a clean sheet of copier paper to remove the ink that is around the leaves. So I'm just going to put this on top and then firmly wrap the paper or not really wrap, but more like push it down so my paper really touches the open areas on the plate and the paper will soak up the ink from the plate. So here you can see what, uh, what happened. Um, the paper really took the ink from the plate and the areas around the leaves is now clean. So now I'm going to remove the leaves. And I can 
I can pull a print from the ink that is left, that was left underneath the, um, the leaves. And here we go. And I hope that um, your image is uh, more sharp than what I'm seeing. Um, because my on my screen it doesn't seem uh, very very sharp, but I hope um, it looks better on yours. But as you can see, uh, if you look very closely, you can see that there is a, a, a very uh, light bit left of the ink that was around the leaves, but it's like almost a white background. That's because I used the copier paper that is soaking up all the ink from the plate. Now I'm going to do uh, another print with the same technique for the first uh, for the first image, but then I'm going to do something else and I'm going to print actually print a second layer. So um, I want to make sure that my plate is completely clean because um, as the inks stay wet and I um, add new colors and roll them out, they will mix with any ink that is left on the plate. And I don't want that, I want clean colors. So I'm just going to see if there's any ink still coming off, which is a tiny little bit. So now my um, plate should be clean enough. And I'm going to uh, apply new colors to the plate. And here you can see this little yellow um, part here. That's where I used this um, bright, vivid green. And it, there's a, a yellow pigment in there and that's what stains the plate here. So I will never be able to get this yellow off the plate again. So it's like, um, it's in there now. So I cannot do anything to get it out of there. So it will also not show up in the next print and it will also not affect um, any future prints. So it's okay with me. Let's do a little bit different color combination. I'm going to use uh, blues and pink. And let's also do a purple. And I'm also going to do a teal. And again, I'm going to roll out my uh, inks and I'm just going to see if my brayer is also clean. I think it is. So I'm again going to blend the colors. And it might look as if I'm taking off all of the ink, which is not the case. But um, some of it is coming up with my brayer. So you really have to be uh, careful when, uh, when blending the colors that you don't take off all the ink, as you can see. Quite, of the, quite some of the ink came off with my brayer. And I'm going to put some leaves on top again. A nice variety. Yes. So people asked about how you're placing the leaves. Do you like to place them vein side down or vein side up? And then we're getting a lot of questions about the inks. So could you tell us what your favorite inks are to use? Yes. Yeah, so the first question, I like to place them veins down because um, they are more um, distinct on the downside. So you will get more of the details in your print. If you put them the other way around, you will see 
way less details. So the site that has the most, um, when you can feel the veins, the site that you can feel the veins is the best site to put down. And uh, for inks, my favorite inks are actually these uh, archival inks to do these techniques because they have a lot of um, pigments. They stay wet along, uh, wet long enough for me to do these techniques. But once they are dry on the paper, they are permanent. So I can then use my papers as collage paper and just go over them with, for instance, a matte medium or uh, paint or any other product without um, reactivating the ink. So that's, that's why I like these inks so much. Also, you can do diff other techniques with these inks where you actually want the ink to dry on the plate. It does take a little while, uh, so you have to be patient if you want the inks to dry on the plate, but they do. So you can, you can do techniques where you want dry ink. I okay. hope that answers the question. One, one specific question. Somebody asked, do the archival inks have alcohol? Uh, yes, I think they do. Um, I think they do. I should. It's, um, I think it's called a solvent ink. Would that mean that there's alcohol in there or a solvent? Um, I can find uh, one of the bigger, one of my bigger pads and it's probably on the, on the back. But uh, let me just do this print and then I will find a bigger uh, ink pad. So um, for this print, I'm going to line up my paper with the paper that's underneath the gel plate. As you can see on the sides that I'm lining up the paper. So I'm pressing down this paper really well. And I'm going to lift it up. So here's the negative of the, the ink that was around the, the leaves on the plate. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to remove the leaves and the leaves also pick up some of the ink, but not all of it. And um, so the color will be less solid than the color that I already picked up here. And what I'm going to do now is I'm again going to uh, line up that paper. So the ink that was underneath the leaves will now also get in this print. But then with all the details of the leaves in it. And then you get this. So this is a very different print than this, but it's the same technique. It's just that in this case, I used my cleanup paper um, to also print on. Okay, I hope that makes sense. And let me real quick see if I have uh, one of my archival sets here. So I have one here and it says, Um, permanent exit free dye inks. Um, that doesn't say anything to me. I'm, I, I'm not, I know, know that dye inks are permanent inks, but I don't know if they are uh, alcohol based or, um, or so, solvent based. Somebody Somebody jumped in and said, archival inks are permanent oil-based inks. They do not have alcohol. So oil-based, okay. I didn't know, I didn't know that. Uh, I know that you can uh, um, stamp on top of alcohol inks with them, but I know, also know that you cannot, I think you cannot use alcohol markers to color um, images that were stamped with archival ink. So I thought they would be um, 
alcohol based because then it would be reactivated. But I don't know. I'm I'm not sure. So you yeah. Wait. All right, one other question jumped in here that they know okay. that sometimes you use your hands and other times you use the brayer. How do you decide which one to use? What's going, what are you thinking? Um, you mean when I, when I put the, the paper on there and I rub the yes. paper? Yes. Uh, did I use the brayer today to do that? I'm not sure. Uh, in this case, with the leaves, it's very hard to use the brayer because you have all the, um, the different heights. So you actually really have to uh, push in the paper in the lower parts. Um, I'm, not, I'm not really sure. It's something that I don't really think about. And um, mm, I think I use my hands more than I use my brayer. But... Um, there's no re there's no specific reason why I would use my brayer instead of my hands if there's nothing under underneath the paper. So it's just okay. I don't know. And no then they're reason. asking for you to explain how you register your prints. How I register, register. my so you have your paper underneath your plate. Yes. So I have my paper underneath my plate. And then when I want to print more than one layer and I want to make sure that the second layer is going to be in exact same position as the first layer, like here, you don't, you can see a little bit of uh, a tiny little white edge here, but you don't want that to be too big, right? So you want, you want it to fit and have it in the same position. So I um, print on paper that has exactly the same size as the paper that's underneath my plate. So if I then uh, look in one corner like here and I make sure that the bottom and the side are in the same position as the paper underneath my plate and I do that again for the second print, then it will always be in the same position. I hope that uh, explains it well enough. Um, okay, let's do another one. And um, this time I'm going to use a different kind of paper to actually um, pick up the first, the first print. So actually the cleanup paper, I'm going to use a different kind of cleanup paper. Let me see what other colors am I going to add? Let's do something something crazy i'm not sure if this is going to work out because i have to blend the colors and this is kind of yellow with the purple might not work out too well it might turn into mud but we'll see we might get surprised and also a green underneath the orangey red might also not be the best combination, but let's live dangerous today. So I'm again blending the colors. It might not be too bad. And I'm again going to add some leaves. Um, let me see, this is a nice one. And so I just picked uh, these leaves about two hours ago, maybe. Um, some of the leaves you can actually um, will be good for a while, especially if you leave them like in a plastic bag and they don't really like dry out. Uh, you don't want to use dried leaves on the plate because if they are like really dry, they will probably break when you uh, put the paper on top and then you get all these little crumbs on your gel plate that you can't lift up and then you 
cannot make any good prints. So your leaves actually have to be fresh. Okay, what I'm going to do now is I have uh, a sheet of cleanup paper here that I used for cleaning my brayer when I was working with acrylic paint. And I'm going to use this to pick up the ink that's um, around the leaves. But because um, the acrylic paint left kind of a plastic layer on the, uh, on the paper, it will not soak up the ink. So I'm, I will be picking up some of the ink, but not all of the ink. So I'm not going to get a clean print as I had uh, in my first print, where I used to copy a paper and all the ink was soaked up. But I will get a very different uh, kind of print. So again, pushing the paper down really well. So it touches the plate everywhere and picking up ink everywhere. And now I'm lifting it up. And now I'm going to remove the leaves carefully. And pulling the print. And instead of the, uh, the areas around the leaves being really clean, uh, you can still see, see some of the ink that was not picked up um, with the acrylic paint cleanup paper. And this gives some more like watercolory look. So it's a, it's a very different look than this one. Although I did exactly the same. So the only thing I changed was the, the type of paper that I used to, um, to pick up the first layer of ink. And now what I'm going to do is, um, first of all, again, I'm going to make sure my plate is clean. And now I'm going to do a new set of colors. And uh, what else? Some my favorite color, the teal down here. Okay, and now I'm going to use uh, some of the leaves that I already used before. And maybe this first uh, print will not show it um, too well yet because I only used, uh, used these leaves uh, once. But um, imagine these leaves picked up some of the ink and um, that ink is still wet. So what happens is if I use those leaves again uh, for a new print, this ink will transfer to the gel plate. So what will happen is that I end up with um, leaf images in a different color than the color I used to print with, to uh, roll that, then the colors that I actually rolled out on my gel plate. And maybe the first one will not be uh, showing that very well, but then I will just do another one. Um, and I'm going to use just the copier paper instead of uh, acrylic paint paper. So this is just clean copier paper.
And um, if it works out the way I hope it works out, then the leaves will have a variety of colors instead of just that one color uh, that's underneath them. And I can, I think I can already see some variations in the color, in the colors. So. Yeah, so here you can, especially in this area, but also here you can see that there, um, there is more color in there than just the color that, um, that I put on the plate because there were different colors already on the leaves. That's fun, isn't it? Let's do another one. And I'm just going to do it on a different kind of paper. So you can uh, see uh, what the result will be if you use different kinds of paper. I really like doing these techniques on, for instance, book paper and music paper, but also on uh, tissue paper because tissue paper is the perfect paper to do, um, to do collage. And as I said before, the, the paints dry uh, permanent. So the collage paper is uh, also perfect or the tissue paper is also perfect to use in a collage. I'm just going to clean my brayer real quick because too much uh, ink piled up on it and it's uh, going to reactivate when I um, add new colors to the plate and I don't want to want everything to become muddy. So if there's no ink coming off anymore, then it will also not come off in the on the plate. I'm just trying it. Okay. Now um, let's do some it's funny that i'm um for these prints i'm using purple all the time with the um, with the pink and the teal and i always tell everybody that uh, i don't like purple purple is not one of my favorite colors and yet when i look around um at my work i see purple in almost everything it is a bit weird. That's funny too. Mm. And a little bit of purple I want here. Okay. And where is my, here it is. And again, I'm just going to use leaves that I've uh, used before. So you can see that there is some bluish teal color on this one. And I'm going to place it down here in the uh, pink area. So that should actually show up. Uh, in the print that I um, used a different color there. And um, let me see, do I have more? Uh, this one. Mm. And let's see what And these do, they, these also have some color, I think, already on them. Any questions right now that I should answer? Uh, no, I think we're good. Everybody's just, I'm mesmerized watching you. 
<laughs> They're talking about all the kinds of wrapping tissue paper you could use. So you can use parchment paper or deli paper. Depends what you yeah. want. <laughs> yeah. Or you can use like um, this kind of um, really thin tissue paper. I, I think it's also called uh, silk paper. And it's the kind of paper that you use for wrapping presents. But sometimes you also have this like really thin tissue paper when you buy clothes online and you get them delivered at, at your home like a t-shirt and it has these like really thin sheets of paper in between. That's mm -hmm. also really uh, works really good for uh, for this technique. Yeah, we so, were just saying if it's too thin though, it'll it won't really pull off, right? It'll tear. No, it, it doesn't. I mean, I, I use the thinnest, the really the thinnest tissue paper that I can get. Mm -hmm. And um, as long as the ink or the paint on the plate is still wet enough, you will be able to uh, remove the tissue paper without tearing it. It just, um, if it is too wet, like if you use um, acrylic paint, Mm -hmm. and you uh, want to pull acrylic paint with tissue paper and there's too much paint on the plate then it will rip because the paper gets too wet and it then is just very delicate mm -hmm. so you have you have to make sure that your your um, layer of paint is really thin but with uh, ink it um, it should be really easy to um, to pull the print without ripping the paper Right, and they're talking now about rice paper. Have you printed on rice paper? Uh, I have not, mm -hmm. but um, you can basically print on any paper. It doesn't really matter from very thick um, watercolor paper to copier paper and really thin tissue paper and um, any, any paper as long as you don't print on photo paper. If you use photo paper, the one that is uh, used for printing your own photos that has a coating that um, actually sticks to the plate and you will not be able to get it off. So any paper you can try and see what happens, mm -hmm. but don't use photo paper. Right. So here we go. I'm again carefully removing the leaves and now I need an extra sheet of um, copier paper because I'm going to place my tissue paper on top. But then I have to rub it a little bit and um, the ink will soak through the paper. So to keep my hands clean, I'm going to place a sheet of copier paper on top. to make sure that I don't get dirty hands. And now I can just pull it up. And uh, I will put the sheet of uh, copy of paper underneath so you can see the colors better. But um, yeah, this is really nice because as you can see, it's very translucent. So when this is dry and uh, permanent and you use a matte medium to glue it in uh, on a background, everything that's underneath this paper uh, will show. And um, it will, when you use an, uh, a matte medium, it will get even um, more translucent, the paper, like almost completely translucent. And you will very well see the, um, the background that's underneath, which I can actually show with one of my um, papers that I uh, that I did before. So I could just tear a little piece up here just to show you really quick. So I have the Liquitex um, matte medium here. Let me grab. A brush oh that's a really big one but that's okay so i'm going to apply a layer of matte medium on my background and then i'm going to place the tissue paper on top 
and then also um, add a thin layer of matte medium on top. So it like really soaks into the, um, to the tissue paper because when the tissue paper gets wet, it turns almost completely translucent. And um, you will hardly see that you added a layer of paper on top of your background. So it's now it's still wet. So you kind of um, still see that there is an extra layer on top. But when this is dry, it will look almost as if I made the print on, on the music paper. Of course, you can do that too. But uh, I mean, if you have an art journal or anything and you want to use your, uh, your prints in there, then this is how it will look. Like it will completely sink into the background and um, yeah, it will almost be as if it's only just one layer. So a lot of possibilities with that. Um, but uh, let me also show you uh, print uh, straight onto book and music paper. Just dry my plate. And my, my grayer. So that's the difference with um, with printing uh, with acrylic paint. So when you print with acrylic paint, just rolling off your brayer is enough because if the acrylic paint uh, dries on the brayer, it will not um, it will not um, reactivate when you uh, use new new paint on the plate. But with the inks. Um, when, while they are still a little bit wet, they will uh, mix with the new colors on the plate. So you will have to clean every now and then your brayer and your plate a little bit. Now let's take some music paper and I think this might be an interesting page to add leaves to. Let's just see what happens. The best thing to do is experiment and just try all kinds of things. And um, find out how your products work and uh, how they work together. And uh, maybe even more important, what do you like? Because um, you might even like the, the, my results, the prints that I'm making, but you might um, not like using uh, inks on the plate. You might think it's too messy or there can be a number of reasons why you don't like a specific technique. Uh, but you only find out by doing it and trying it. So play. You have to play to get to know your gel plate and uh, all the things you can do with it. And um, again, I'm using uh, a leaf that already has um, ink on it because I really like the added color. It makes the print so much more interesting if they uh, if there are more more colors. So there we go. I just saw on, popping up on my screen somebody saying I uh, have to have one plate, especially for inks, which is really a good idea because then um, you don't have to worry about those stains and um, your, your other plate that you use with the uh, with paint will always stay nice and clean. Although even if you only use um, acrylic paints on your plate, it will never stay as um, clear 
and glossy as when you um, when you just bought it. And actually, if it gets a little bit more uh, cloudy um, and less um, less clear, which uh, only shows that um, it is um, being used a lot. Um, it is it it is as if the plate works even better. If it has been used for a while, that some of the techniques actually work better on a, a, a plate that has been used a lot than on a new plate, especially when you work with inks, for instance, and uh, wet products on new plate they might uh, beat up and. Um, create a funny effect, which can be nice, but maybe not what you're looking for. That will not happen on a plate that has been uh, used more and is less slick. So it's not um, as smooth and slick anymore as when it was just new. I think these colors are really, really nice. Am I going to put it on here or on the music paper? What do you say? I'm not sure. Uh, I think this one is going on the music paper. Yes, very nice. At least that's my opinion. I really like this, especially the one down here. A lot of detail in there. Um, and let's do another one where I'm using the acrylic paint page before I print on the music paper. And so I can show you the difference. Also, if you don't use acrylic paint, I know there are people that only use uh, inks on the plate. They don't use acrylic paint. So if you don't have any acrylic paint cleanup paper, what you can do is use a glossy magazine page. And I'm actually going to show you. I will show you. Um, you get a similar effect. Because the glossy paper from a magazine is also not soaking up the ink. So it's also going to leave some of the ink behind uh, on the plate and um, creating that same watercolory effect. Maybe even, maybe even more. Oh, I need to roll it out. <laughs> Otherwise it's going to be not at all a nice print. Now I can put my leaves on. And also uh, not all of the leaves work uh, as well. Some of them work like really well and it also depends on um, how much ink they actually pick up from the plate. So some leaves are, um, I have one here, for instance. This is a, like a really soft one uh, on the bottom side. And this picks up more ink than one that is like really um, smooth on the bottom side. So um, different leaves can also give different effects, but also different, um, quality of print. Some leaves just don't work as well as others. So I said I was going to show you the magazine page. So here I have a page from a magazine, a glossy magazine. And this should not pick up as much ink as the, um, the normal copier paper. 
So in the print, it would also uh, have some color still in uh, the areas around, around the leaves. And I think even a little bit more than the, than the acrylic paint page. This looks like it's going to be a nice one, but you never know. Um, I'm going to take um, a book page. And this is a little bit smaller than my plate, so I'm placing a paper on top because otherwise that would have been on my hands. Okay, so here you can see that the magazine paper actually left so much paint uh, ink behind between the leaves that I kind of lost all the details here. Up here it's really nice and this area too. But that's okay. It's okay if the print is like not totally perfect because I can still use this as collage paper and only use uh, the top half. Or I could cut out a square, this square up here and um, use it to make a card for instance and add a sentiment. But in... Uh, in total, I think this is actually quite a nice print. Okay, let me see. I think I um, showed all the uh, things I wanted to show. Yeah, I, I showed the different papers and I showed the different cleanup pages. Um, Maybe I can do one uh, with the technique I did in the beginning with lining up the paper and having the, uh, the leaves back into the, um, the negative and try that on music paper. So I can do one more, I will do one more. And then uh, I'm going to finish the class. And uh, of course you can do this with any color combination that you like. I tend to go back to the same, uh, the same combinations. Let's do something different. But, uh, that's also something you can play with and to see what you like. So I'm trying to do it a little bit different in this print. Um, maybe some brighter yellow, adding a brighter yellow and um, a vermilion, vermilion. I don't know how to pronounce that. I have no idea how to pronounce that in English. In Dutch, it's vermilion but that's probably not even near the way you pronounce it in English. So these might actually be a little bit more like real fall colors, which is also nice for a change. But again, I'm using the, um, the leaf, some of the leaves I've used before. So still some of those other colors will uh, show up in this print. Okay, so now I have to um, see how I can line up my book paper. I will have to cut it later, but um, I want to line it up 
because I want to do the double print. So I'm again looking at this edge and um, the bottom here and lining up the paper there to do my first print. Okay, that's the first. So that's my negative. And now I'm removing the leaves. And I'm going to line it up again on the side and at the bottom. To print the details in there. There we go. That's more like fall colors, right? So now I can just cut it to size. Okay, um, maybe we can change the camera view uh, to my to my face again. And um, are there any any questions that I can answer right now? I don't have any. No. No. No questions. Okay. No, you're good. People good. love it. Then I. <laughs> nice. That's good to hear. So then I can. Uh, I want to point out um, our upcoming Zoom classes for Michaels, and um, there will be um, three that are already on the Michaels uh, website and that you can already register for. And the first one is on October 26, which will be um, by Marcia Falk. And she's doing um, Halloween cards using uh, handmade foam stamps. And on November 5th, I will be back and I will be making um, holiday cards with a gift. And I'm I will actually make ornaments that um, are hanging on the cards and people can that receive the cards can actually hang them in their Christmas tree. And then on November 9, uh, Tanya Ahmed will be um, on with uh, holiday cards, um, showing you how you can turn your gel prints into holiday cards. So that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed today's class and uh, I hope you, to see you again uh, next time for um, our next Zoom class. Um, so for now, goodbye. Bye-bye.